Hello everyone and welcome to Teachings in Education, a short history of federal education laws for students with disabilities. Having an understanding of these laws will benefit both special education teachers and the parents of their students. Now, first up, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965. This law includes provisions to include free and reduced lunch program initiatives that are designed to help low-income families and it also supports an increase in the number of teachers in low-income areas. It was President Lyndon B. Johnson that pushed for the flexibility and funding to local districts. Lunch provisions are built upon the National School Lunch Program that started in 1946 by Harry Truman. This law aimed to give educational and financial support to the children that needed it most. Next the Vocational Rehabilitation Act and Section 504 of 1973. The big takeaways from this law here is that it prohibits discrimination against students with disabilities in terms of federal funding. It also provides a definition for the term appropriate education. Educators in particular may pay attention to the part Section 504. 504 ensures that students with disabilities have equal access to education as other students. Moving on, we come up to the Educational Amendments Act of 1974. Well, it gives students and their families the right to due process for special education cases. And it stands for giving federal funding for gifted and talented students in fact, the Office of the Gifted and Talented was initially housed within the U.S. Office of Education and given official status. Federal funds are given to states for programs with exceptional learners. The next law up is one of the most important laws, the Education for All Handicapped Children Act of 1975. Defining the Least Restrictive Environment, mostly called the LRE in education, the IEP, which stands for Individualized Education Programs, it requires free and appropriate public education for all, and this begins for ages 5 through 18. The least restrictive environment is first defined here, and it is understood that children with disabilities should spend as much time as possible with their non-disabled peers. Next up, the Education of Handicapped Acts Amendment of 1986. The most important success here is that free and appropriate education was extended to children from ages 3 to 5, whereas before it began at age 5. Also, early intervention programs for children with disabilities from birth ages to 2 years old. This law created the Handicapped Infants and Toddlers Program, and this law was specifically aimed at children with developmental delays and other disabilities. The next law is a rather famous law, the American with Disabilities Act of 1990. The important key takeaways here are that it prohibits discrimination of people with disabilities in the workforce. It also provides equal opportunity to employment, accommodations, services, transportation, and more. Equal opportunity is provided to a broad number of people, including HIV positive people. ADA makes it illegal to discriminate against people with disabilities anywhere which includes the school systems. Now, let's move on to another one of the most important laws, that is the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. Let's take a quick look at some of the many accomplishments. Transition programs beginning at age 16, bilingual education programs, extends special education services to include social work, rehabilitation, and more, due process in education, confidentiality, and student information, the transition programs are designed to help these children get jobs when they exit high school. More provisions are added to ensure confidentiality in keeping student records. And lastly, I want to mention the emphasis of this law on including social services and rehabilitation services for special education students. The next law up is the amendment to the law we just discussed. So now we have the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act of 1997. A quick summary of the successes here include the following. Mediation to resolve differences. General education teachers are part of the IEP team. Students with disabilities take state tests. Behavior management plans. Students with disabilities continue services if they are expelled from school. 
The general education teacher being part of the IEP team makes sense with the inclusion and mainstream movement. Mediation is great for when schools and parents cannot come to mutual agreements. Students with disabilities will take standardized tests. Moving on to one of the most renowned laws, the No Child Left Behind Act. The major contributions from this act include Early intervention reading programs School choice for students from failing schools Increased accountability on schools School choice stands out from this act. The idea is that students should have opportunities to attend successful schools. Public schools are now required to make the grade. And this law's number one complaint is that it adds unnecessary pressure on schools and teachers. Failing schools must meet minimum benchmarks for student achievement. And as we get closer to the end, we come upon the IDEA Improvement Act of 2004, known as IDEIA. Higher standards for special education teacher license and certification, increased funding to early intervention services, the use of RTI response to intervention. There's a great deal of data that has shown the importance of early intervention. So additional funding is another avenue to help close the achievement gap. Now the standards have become raised and special education teachers of today are all the better for it. Now, moving on to some of the most recent laws. That being the Every Student Succeeds Act of 2015. It gives more control to the states in terms of standardized testing and consequences for low performance. Only 1% of students overall can be giving alternative assessments. There are also bull bullying prevention plans. Studies show students with disabilities are often the targets of bullying behavior. Schools are responsible for setting up plans to prevent bullying and protect special education students. Every Student Succeeds looks to decrease the amount of high-stakes testing by allowing the states to make decisions. Now let's move on to our last category, landmark cases that had an impact on special education students. We'll dive right in with Heining versus Doe. Ultimately, this ruling states that schools cannot expel students for behaviors related to their disabilities. The next case, Park versus Pennsylvania. PARC stands for Pennsylvania Association of Retarded Citizens. This law says states cannot deny mentally retarded children access to free public education. Continuing, we have Hudson v. Raleigh. The Hudson stands for Hendrick Hudson School District. It states schools must provide sufficient, but not the best possible education under FAPE, free and appropriate public education. And lastly, Mills v. the Board of Education. After it was all said and done, it was determined that schools must provide supplemental services needed for children to attend schools at no cost to the parents. Now, in finishing, a quick hello to Abby Lewittis. And for everyone else, I want to say don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the button below. You can give me a like and please share and check the description below to download a PowerPoint for more resources.